This is the OTB Network. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Anthony Mormino. This week's edition of HNC, we will be down at Tampa Bay Downs as they kick off their 75th season. Fairgrounds, Laurel, Hollywood Park, Aqueduct Racecourse as the racing season comes to its year-end conclusion. Soft on the docket this week and next week, but we'll get through the winter with kicking off Tampa Bay Downs as they started for the 75th season they had the fifty thousand dollar six furlong inaugural stakes and they're off. Frank Kushren is away at Dirtley on the outside, as well as Diablo's Choice and Given to Fly. Those three come away across the track. Crispy Jet advancing toward the rail. The last turns away, right stop. On to the main track. That's Given to Fly. Along the rail, up on the outside is Run Kush, Run and Diablo's Choice. Two and a half lengths farther back, Crispy Jet. Now racing along fourth. Then it's a gap of five. One special judge is there fifth. Two lengths farther back to T-Boy. Now six, three parts of a length. Zav Red Chief on the outside is now seventh. Far outside, Dancing with the Bear is eighth. Right stop is toward the rail. Racing along ninth is their midway in the turn. Diablo's Choice has the lead and Run Kush, Run driving up on the outside. Not a challenge second. A length and a half farther back. Crispy Jet racing along third. One special judge swings to the center of the racetrack, and he's full of run. They straighten away for the run to the wire in the inaugural. Run, Kush, run with the lead. Given to fly battles back toward the rail, and here comes one special judge in the center of the track. In deep stretch, three across the track. One special judge on the outside, and Sidney Lejeune to take the 16th winning of the inaugural. Running time on the board, six for longs. 111 flat. The winner, one special judge at 9 to 2 by the young sire Judge TC, sits off a very hot pace set by Diablo's Choice and Run Cush Run, the 5 to 2 favorite in the race. They meant the opening quarter 21 and 4, making the half in 44 and 3, respectively. That was just enough to allow one special judge to sit off the pace, get the job done, ridden successfully by Sidney Lejeune with a final running time of 111 flat. And we'll head south in the Sunshine State to Calder Racecourse as they wind down their meet before moving over to Gulfstream Park on January 3rd. They had split divisions of a seven and a half furlong turf stakes race, the Francis Genter. Here's the first division now. They're all in the gate. And they're off for the Francis A. Genter handicap. And toward the outside, I know best, rushes right out for the lead. Toward the outside, that's Lorica moving up next. Then from between horses comes Presumed Innocent. At the hedge, moving up next, that's Sen Zipporah. They move into the clubhouse turn with I Know Best, moving off to a two-and-a-half length lead. Chapel moves up on the outside into second position. At the hedge, that's Sen Zipporah. Half length to the outside, it's Lorica. Then a length and a half to the inside, it's Presumed Innocent. It's another length back, moving from between horses. That's March Magic. Then toward the far outside, it's Precious Feather. Another length and a half back to the far outside, it's Efficient Frontier. Then comes Brown-Eyed Lass, and at the hedge, clearly a queen. They went the first quarter in 23-3. and three. The pace is moderate as they move to the fourth turn. It's I Know Best in front by three. Lorica takes up the chase second, then to the inside. That's Chapel back to third. It's another length to Efficient Frontier. On the outside, it's March Magic. Then moving at the inside, that's Presumed Innocent. A length back to Precious Feather. Another length to the inside, Brown Eyed Last. Moving at the rail, it's clearly a queen. And now sends a poor as the trailer. The half 46-2, and two, and they're at the top of the stretch. I know best leading by a length to the outside. That's Lorica moving up. It's two lengths to the outside. That's Efficient Frontier. They move past the eighth pole. I know best with Lorica moving up on the outside. And now Lorica takes the lead. In deep stretch, it's Lorica. She's going to take the Francis A. Genter handicap. It's a three way photo for the place. Lorica scores her first stakes victory, trained by John Forbes, successfully ridden by Jose Ferrar, although Lorica was somewhat green in the lane as she ran down the early pace setter, who I thought was in good deep stretch, I know best. Lorica 
scoring at $19.20, defeats I Know Best, who was a healthy 17 to 1 over Brown Eyed Last, 12 to 1, King, a very nice trifecta before the holiday season, $3,018. And with Efficient Frontier, a horse we saw up at Saratoga, makes the super effective pay over $33,000 for one lucky $2 winner down at Calder Racecourse. The favorite, Cessna Pora, finished 10th and last at 5 to 2. March Magic, trained by Richie Violet, finished second, was the second choice at 3 to 1, runs 8th in her turf debut. We'll stay at Calder Racecourse for the second division of the Francis Genter at seven and a half furlongs on the turf. And they're off in the Francis A. Genter Handicap second division. Rocky North to the inside, rushes out to the lead as expected. Agarita moves into second position, then to the inside, that's Zeiting. To the outside, it's Shamrock Love. Length back toward the inside comes Jemima. It's another half length back to the far outside. Captive Audience moving through at the rail. That's Capital Request. It's another length back between horses to Samoa. Three lengths to the inside, that's Golden Saint. And two lengths to Q. They went the first quarter in 23 and 2. They straighten out for the run up the backstretch. Rocky North. North that holds a five-length lead. Agarita's in second position. Between horses, that's Shamrock Love. El Rafi on the far outside. Length and half back to the hedge. It's Ziding. Then it's another length back to the inside. That's Jemima. Half-length back, captive audience. Looking for room at the rail. It's Capital Request. Then to the far outside, Samoa. Another length back. That's Golden Saint. And two lengths to Q. The half in 47 seconds flat, and they move toward the quarter pole. Rocky North still in front, but now only by two. It's Agarita in second position. Position, length back to the inside. Ziding moves up. Then toward the rail, it's Jemima. They're at the top of the stretch. It's Rocky North leading now by two and a half. To the inside, it's Ziding. Down the middle of the course, here comes Golden Saint. Toward the inside, it's Capital Request. They move to the 16th pole. Rocky North is getting late. Here comes Ziding on the outside. Capital Request. Then Jemima. Deep stretch. It's Ziding in front. She's going to take the Francis A. Genta. It's going to be close for the place with between J Jemima and Golden Saint. Ziding, the Irish bred, trained by Christoph Clement, successfully ridden by Renee Douglas, who's winning at over 20%. Christoph Clement winning turf races across the United States, scores at $13.60. Jemima runs second at a very nice 24 to 1 with Golden Saint completing the trifecta at 28 to 1. Ziding's third race in the U.S. since coming over from France in the late summer won a $45,000 stake at the Meadowlands in her most recent start and is now two for two with the addition of Lasix. Jemiah, first start from Great Bitten, trained by Angel Penna Jr., an outstanding trainer of Phillies, especially three-year-olds, added Lasix for the first time for a nice placing. Golden State previously three for four on her favorite service, the Calder Turf. We move our way up the Mason-Dixon line and over to Laurel Park for Saturday's edition of the Bowie Stakes. And they're off. NCC's honor was off to a sharp beginning today. Goes right to the front, but Montana Dreamin hooks right up with him, and they're going a fast pace early on. Trounce settles right off the leaders in third, and my problem is fourth, about three and a half from the duelers. He's my buckaroo as the last horse. Five lengths covers him as they head for the far turn. Now in CeCe's honor begins to get away from the speed horse Montana Dreamin' as Trounce moves up on the outside. He's my buckaroo and my problem in the back of the pack into the far turn. Clear lead by a length and a half here for in CeCe's honor, who scoots away to lead in the far turn in CeCe's honor, blazing out the fractions 22 and 1 was the opening quarter as they move along to the quarter pole in the top of the lane. Trounce is running in second. On the far outside is... My problem as they turn for home in CeCe's honor, but now surrounded. Here's my problem on the outside going on with it. And my problem begins to take off from in CeCe's honor. Trounces back in third, down to the 16th pole. My problem with a loop on the turn to win it. Surged up three wide and wins going away. My problem by two to in CeCe's honor. Trounce was third, and he's my buckaroo. My problem. 
$21.20 gets the job done in this six furlong stakes race, bred by press card out of a Hagley mare, defeats in CC's honor, who was the four to five chalk in the race with Trounce running third. We had a muddy racetrack as the rains swept through much of the southern United States. My problem trailed in CC's honor and trounced up the backstretch as in CC's honors tripped the teletimer in 22 and 1, 45 and 2, but in the stretch my problem powerfully kicked in a final quarter mile of 24 seconds flat, stopping the teletimer in 1 minute 10 and 1 fifths of a second. Sunday's feature from Laurel Racecourse saw a two-turn stakes race, the Carousel Stakes, also run over a muddy racetrack. And they're off in the Carousel. Random Honors leaves no prints. Catherine of Ascot and Silent Valet showing early speed and settling in there is Goldstreamer. Fourth into the first turn. Under the rug gets over and saves some ground into the first turn. And fifth, three lengths in the front is under the rug. It's a break of two more lengths. Back to Tooken Down, followed by Megan's Joy. Then back to Proud Owner and trailing the field is Masada. Silent Valet is pushed by Catherine of Ascot past the seven ace pole. They have opened up two lengths on Random Honors. Third, leave no prints back in fourth. Under the rug is settled nicely in fifth, five and a half lengths on the front. Length and a half more back to Gold Streamer. Following Gold Streamer is Tooken Down. And back to Megan's Joy has got to be a dozen lengths off the lead already. Then back to Proud Owner is dropping toward last position. Masada has passed her and Masada improves one spot to second to last but still far back about 14 lengths off the lead and a good pace on the muddy track going here. Silent Valet three quarters of a length from Catherine of Ascot. Right there too is Random Honors and it's another three lengths and under the rug continues well in fourth position followed by Gold Streamer is next in fifth. Here's Megan's Joy now working up to sixth, about eight lengths in the lead, and she's mounting a rally on the inside. Megan's Joy perhaps moving best of them all, and she's coming through down inside there. Five, four and a half lengths from the lead. Five sixteens to go. Silent Valet has been pressed hard by Catherine of Ascot, who gains a small lead. Random Honors is next. Megan's Joy continues momentum in the far outside. Under the rug, meanwhile, gets through on the inside. Under the rug gets through inside. Sharp move by Dominguez as they turn for home. Megan's Joy got to continue with that move on the outside, followed by Catherine of Ascot, who hangs in tough after prompting a fast pace. It's under the rug in front by two lengths from Megan's Joy with a furlong to go. Catherine of Ascot is next for the center of the track, battling for minor awards, gold streamer. And in between horses is proud owner, 16th of a mile to go, under the rug. Megan's Joy's lunging at her. It's going to be close. Too close to call. I think it's under the rug. Megan's Joy, Catherine of Ascot, proud owner, was next and took him down. Under the rug, the two to one favorite gets the job done paying $6.20, bred by the outstanding recently deceased sire, Lord at War, out of a Mr. Prospector Mayor sweepings, defeats Megan's Joy at 7-1, and Catherine of Ascot finished up third. Under the rug, steady at the 5-16th pole, gets through on the rail in a driving successful effort by Ramon Dominguez. Megan's Joy inside in the far turn, Five wide at the quarter mile pole, finishes a nice second. Catherine of Ascot pressed a very strong pace, was three wide, faded, was the co-second choice with Silent Valley, who finished last in the Carousel Stakes. We'll take our first break right now. When we come back, I'll have races from the fairgrounds, Turf Paradise, and Northern California's Golden Gate Fields. We'll be right back. This year, many thoroughbreds, no longer able to compete, will join the ranks of racing's homeless. Since 1982, the Thoroughbred Retirement Foundation and its supporters have been providing help and hope for those in need. Creating opportunities where once there were none, the TRF, together with the racing industry, is meeting the challenge, taking care of their own. Yesterday's innovative concepts combining the TRF's rescue mission with educational and rehabilitation goals have become today's life-saving success stories and a track record of unsurpassed growth. Safely retired thoroughbreds are now enjoying second careers, bringing responsibility, healing, and purpose to the lives of those who need it most. With your help, we can continue our saving mission ensuring many more horses the welcome home they so richly deserve. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We'll go down to New Orleans for the Fairgrounds Racetrack. 
Pago Hop Stakes, originally scheduled for the about distance of a mile on the turf. They had a very severe rainstorm. It ended up being running at one mile on the main track. Originally 14 entries. We lost half the field with only seven getting in the starting gate. Let's go down to New Orleans. They're all in the gate. They're off in the Pango Hop. Frankly, my dear, was alert from the gate. Now Crystal C moves up from the outside. Nanny's Dinner is next. Then about four back to Real Concern. Racing in fourth, Sassy Sabrina on the inside. The impending Bear is next in Southern Ivy is the trailer. Heading to the back stretch, the leader is Crystal C by a length. Frankly, my dear, is next. Then comes Nanny's Dinner in third at the rail. It's two back to Real Concern, racing in fourth. Four lengths back is Impending Bear, Sassy Sabrina, and the trailer is Southern Ivy. Down the back stretch they go, Crystal C. Has the lead at this point by two and a half. On the outside is Frankly My Dear. Nanny's Dinner right there in third. It's four lengths back to Real Concern. Impending Bear is next. Another gap of four, Southern Ivy. Sassy Sabrina now trails. Moving now to the top of the stretch. Crystal C by two and a half, frankly. My dear is next. Nanny's dinner on the inside. Impending bear trying to get it together, but in mid-stretch. It is Crystal C. She finds more. Now leads by four. But wait, here's Frankly My Dear that may have something to say about it. Here's the finish, and Frankly My Dear draws clear to win the Pango Hop. And on a very sloppy racetrack, Frankly My Dear scores at 5-2. to two. Frankly My Dear bred by the brilliant off-track sire by Scarlet Ibis out of a quadratic mare. We had slop breeding both top and bottom. Crystal C finished second at 4-1 to one with Impending Bear. 8-5 to five choice finishing third. Frankly, my dear, is now 6 for 11, wins her second $100,000 stake at the fairgrounds. She won the Tiffany last on January 30th of this year. Crystal C had two consecutive wins coming into this race, and Impending Bear runs third in the mud again, Pre previously finished third to the outstanding runners Jostle and March Magis on an off track at Pimlico in the Black Eyed Susans in March. The final running time in the Pago Hop Stakes by Frankly My Dear is 1.39 and 3. On Sunday, they had the 11th running of the six furlong stakes, the F.W. Gowden Memorial Handicap. They're off. All got away together. Sand Ridge on the inside moves for the lead. Abajo quickly alongside and just behind him, Bonapar racing in third. Show me the stage also up there to join the leader. Sandridge has dropped back. It's about five now back to Lake Hamilton and Lightning Ball, sixth past the half and into the far turn. Show me the stage. Has the lead ahead of Bajo. They are necks apart by the three-eighths and Bonaparte stalks them in third. Four lengths back to Sandridge. The other two are far back and at the... Top of the stretch, Abajo has the lead by two and a half, Bonaparte. On the outside, farther out is Sand Ridge. Show me the stage is dropped back, and there at the eighth pole, Abajo, very game on the inside, has the lead a half. Bonaparte is next, Sand Ridge is third. It will be Abajo in front winning the goat and Bonaparte was second and Sandridge. Abajo wins the 11th running of the Gowden Memorial Handicap paying $8.20 defeating the 6 to 5 favorite Bonaparte. Sandridge 3 to 1 in the wagering runs third. Donnie Mesh successfully riding this offspring of Robin Dancer, trained by Steve Asmussen. Abajo, second race off a four and a half month layup, has turned into a six furlong demon as he is now six wins, 
three second place finishes and five thirds in 16 career starts going six furlongs. Abajo sat off the pace of Show Me the Stage. Bonaparte was three for three sprinting this year, including a nice victory on opening day in the Thanksgiving handicap. Sandridge chipped down from Kentucky exiting back-to-back -back career efforts. And last at four to one was the four-year-old Philly Show Me the Stage who defeated Colts early in the year at Oaklawn Park in the Count Fleet, but Jess is way off her game. The final running time of this six furlong stakes was a very healthy 109 and one. We move over to very sunny Phoenix for Turf Paradise as they run the Christmas Futurity. Off and running in the Christmas Futurity. It's a fast start for Light Up the Night, straight to the front, but headed right away by Toast for Mr. Expo, who sprints clear by Alec now. Top hits up to join the fray in third. Ground connection came away in fourth. Jake's corner moves up between horses, a closer fifth. Fly to fame, five off the pace, but gaining from the inside in sixth. They're followed by Prohibitive, who's six lengths off the pace early, daunting next and gaining up the inside, then Kinston, and four farther back to Increaser, who's ten lengths off the pace. They're the opening quarter in a solid 22 and one. Toast for Mr. Expo leads it by one. The top hit in second. Fly to fame racing third. Jake's corner three wide in fifth now. Daunting up the inside. Next followed by Crown Connection. And it's a length and a half farther back to Prohibitive. Up the inside. Light up the night. Has lost some ground early. Kinston moves up three wide now from the back of the pack comes Increaser to the top of the lane. Toast for Mixer Expo is collared by top hit and top hit pressing on by. On the outside is Jake's corner. They head for home. Top hit and David Noosh have taken the lead. And Toast for Mr. Expo Jake's corner trying to stoke up a rally from third. Dauntings racing in fourth by two in Kinston. Down to the final for long. Top hit is booted away by two. Jake's corner not getting to him. Top hit goes on to win the Christmas Futurity. Top hit by two and a half to Jake's corner. Daunting was third. And a victory. Final running time of 115 and three. Very strong for top hit defeating Jake's corner, who was seven to two second choice and daunting. At five to two finishes third. Top hit makes it three in a row with this victory. Two races back, won a maiden claiming race for $62,500. Could have picked up this stakes winner. Pressed the pace, took command in deep stretch. Trainer Corey Owens just lighting up the board at Turf Paradise this year. Jake's Corner had won three in a row, including a state bred stake race. Two races back before running fourth in an allowance race on December 1st. Stalk outside just wasn't enough. Daunting broke its maiden when beating winners in the most recent effort. After the half mile in 44 and 3, they got the six furlongs in 109 and 1. And as I pointed out, David Noosh, a terrific final running time for a two year old going six and a half furlongs of 115 and three. We now head up to Northern California, Golden Gate Fields, where they had a $50,000 stakes race for two-year-olds going eight furlongs on the main track. The Gold Rush stakes run over a muddy racetrack at Golden Gate Fields. And there they go, beautiful beginning. And quickly, I'm a drifter is out for the lead. Lord Kin Spirit runs into second. I'm going to jump run one, Heaven Street, Zordfish. Legendary weave towards the rail and Otter be a sit. As expected, I'm a drifter to dictate the tempo. He leads into the clubhouse turn. Jum run one is up close inside of Heaven Street. Lord Kin Spirit three wide in the blue. Swordfish settles into fifth, about three from the front and two clear from Legendary Weave. The trailer is Otter be a sin. Opening quarter in 22 and two. And with the lead, it's I'm a drifter by nearly a length and a half. Heaven Street emerges into second covering Jumron one. Lord Kin Spirit remains three wide, but only two from the front. Another three back to Swordfish, two to Otter be a Zen covering. Legendary weave, half mile to travel. I'm a drifter, has the lead to himself. It's better than a length and a half. Lord Kin Spirit continues to chase with Jumron one up close in the orange. Heaven Street is losing ground. Swordfish moves into 
fourth, more than five from the front. Then go to Legendary Weep and Otter be in the half, one in 45 and four. I'm a drifter, gets all the attention by better than two. Lord Kin Spirit continues to follow in his footsteps. Jumron one is under pressure in third. Then we go further back to Swordfish and Legendary Weep. Three quarters and 110, they have to beat. I'm a drifter. He enters the lane with a four length lead. Legendary Weave towards the rail. Then we're going to jump run one and Swordfish. Final furlong. I'm a drifter shows the way home. His lead is five. Legendary Weave is second. A big performance from I'm a drifter. I'm a drifter and Jose Ariaga win the gold rush stakes wire to wire over Legendary Weave. Sword I'm a drifter gets the job done in this one mile race. Backers made I'm a Drifter 7 to 5, paying $4.80, bred by Sluido out of an exploded mare, ridden successfully by Jose Aria. Legendary Weave finishes second at 9 to 1. Swordfish hits the board running third at 7 to 2. I'm a Drifter, a runner who fell to the earth in his most recent effort on Veterans Day over at Bay Meadows in the California Juvenile, a grade 3 effort. I'm a Drifter was clear of the field and at the 16th pole just fell to the ground. Since then had three bullet workouts leading up to this race. The betters had no problem with most pre effort. Seven to five on the board, successful wire job. Legendary Weaver well back early as per usual runs second. And Swordfish, a cowbred, ran wide to finish third. We'll take our second break now. When I come back, I'll have races from Hollywood Park as they finish up their meet with two outstanding grade one races, plus a older Philly and Mare turf race and the weekend features from Aqueduct. Only four stakes races are being offered this Christmas weekend. The feature will be the grade two $150,000 Bale Coa handicap for Phillies and Mares three and up on Saturday from Hollywood Park. Saturday at the fairgrounds finds three-year-olds in the $100,000 Woodchopper Handicap. From Calder Saturday, three-year-olds go in the $100,000 Pete Axthelm Handicap. Finally, from Aqueduct on Saturday, it's the $75,000 Grade 3 Gravesend Handicap for three-year-olds and up. On Christmas Eve, Aqueduct will be closed. We will have racing from Philadelphia Park, Calder, and the fairgrounds. Capital OTB will be closed on Christmas Day with normal hours resuming on Tuesday. On behalf of the staff and management of Capital OTB, we wish you a safe and joyous holiday season. Now we'll head down the freeway to Southern California as Hollywood Park finishes up their fall autumn meeting. Two features on Saturday. The first one we'll show will be the mile and a half way of stakes named after the outstanding turf champion in the late 70s. A mile and a half on the grass from Hollywood Park. All in line in the wire handicap. And yeah, there they go. Prized Prospect comes away with the lead. Perfect copy to the outside, goes up to challenge her. Hollywood Bald Cat gets away, settling into third. Keld from her outside post position advances up into fourth position while Ki Moon is at the rail in fifth. Shebane between those horses in sixth. She's just five from the front. Then it's two lengths back to the trailer, and that's Marie de Bayou. They come onto the top of the stretch, and Perfect Copy has the lead, leading it by two and a half, maybe three lengths from Prize Prospect, who's back into second. Hollywood Bald Cat still racing in third. Key Moon is at the rail in fourth, and Keld to her outside in fifth, and she's sixth from the front. Then it's a length and a half back to Shebane, and Marie DeBayou still trails. That's the field as they move past the grandstands. They still have a lap to go and a mile to go, and it's Perfect Copy. Brees Blanc trying to throttle her and sell her back into a comfortable stride. He's doing that right now, and Perfect Copy just darting along, leading it by about three half lengths. Along the inside, Prize Prospect is still there in second, while to the outside, Hollywood Bald Cat is third. Along the inside, Key Moon saving ground at the rail in fourth. Keld is now back into fifth. Then it's a gap of two and a half lengths back to Shebane in sixth and Marie de Bayou. And no real significant change in the running order in the first portion of the race. And as they head onto the back stretch, it's now perfect copy. And Brice Blanc has got to be wondering if he has enough now as they turn onto the back stretch. They're still clear by maybe a half a dozen lengths. Prize Pospec remains in second to the outside Hollywood Bald Cat in third. And it's now Key Moon advancing up into fourth position. Gary Stevens having a look around, taking a look at that leader. He's 
Seven lengths from the front. Then it's a gap of two and a half back to Keld, followed by Shebane and Marie de Bayou. That pair trails by 10. They go to the far turn, and it's still perfect copy. She's still in a stroll, leading it by about five lengths. Prize prospect clinging to second. Hollywood bald cat is underway now. She's advancing up from third, and Ki Moon going to go with her. And now the tempo is quickening as they begin to take big strides towards perfect copy. At perfect copy, only in front by a length and a half. Now just a length, and now they're beginning to inhale her. Perfect copy is now giving up the lead to Hollywood bald cat. To the outside, Ki Moon is going with her. Then it's two and a half back to uh, along the inside prize prospect who swings to the outside. She comes on third now. Keldon fourth out of the turn and into the stretch. And Key Moon straightens up on the wire. She's in front by almost two lengths. Hollywood Bald Cat in second. Prize Prospect running a very good race now. She's up into second position. Shebane kicks on now. She comes up into third, but they are just not going to catch Key Moon. Gary Stevens and Key Moon, and they did this in a stroll. It's Key Moon to win the wire. Shebane got up for second. Prize Prospect runs third. And Kimoon, the French bred, gets the job done for Gary Stevens, trained by the outstanding Neil Drysdale. Kimoon most recently ran against Colts across town at Santa Anita, and previous to that, competed in the Grade One Ramona handicap down at Del Mar. Kimoon did win three races back in a small $75,000 stakes race, going a mile and three eighths on the turf at Del Mar on August 11th. So Neil Drysdale once again, a long distance horse. Bred well to go that distance, gets the job done. Shebane finished second under the popular combination of Julio Kanani and Cora Nakatani. He enjoys Hollywood Park and of the distance of a mile and a half in four starts over there, has a victory and three second place finishes once again for Shebane. And prize prospect shipped in from Woodbine, still eligible for non-winners of one other than, although in 12 career starts, has hit the board in 10. Four second place finishes, five thirds, so rings up another third for prize prospect at 29 to one. They got the first six furlongs in the Wea in 113 and two, and then basically got the second six furlongs in the same 113 and two for a final running time of 226 and three. The feature on the Saturday card at Hollywood Park, the 20th running of the $200,000 added Hollywood Futurity for two-year-olds going a mile of 16th. When all was said and done, the purse registered at over $340,000. We had a short field and a stick out exiting the Breeders' Cup juvenile race. So let's go back to Hollywood Park and the Hollywood Futurity. And there they go. And there goes Bank Street going directly to the front with Golden Ticket chasing after in second and Millennium Wind. Little speed early on to keep position at the rail and Millennium Wind goes right up to the front with Golden Ticket. And those two now throw two lengths on Bank Street who's back into third. And Point Given is racing along in fourth about six lengths from the front as they go past the 7 8 mile marker. And it's Millennium Wind and he's tugging hard. He leads it by a half a length from Golden Ticket to the outside in second. Bank Street remains in third and he's now four from the front. Then it's a gap of three back to Point Given, and Point Given trails by five as he inches closer to the leader, and it's Millennium Wind. He's still in front by a half from Golden Ticket, but Point Given has now worked his way up to third. He's only a length and a half from the pace, and Point Given is pulling along, and now Gary Stevens has him right where he wants him. He is third, just a length off the pace, and now Bank Street is last. Down the back stretch, and Millennium Wind, a short lead from Golden Ticket, who's right there to keep him honest. And now to the outside, Point Given stacks up three across the track inside the half mile pole. Bank Street is now fourth and last as they go for the far turn. Golden Ticket, Millennium Wind, they're stride for stride with three furlongs to go. Point Given just to the outside, waiting to pounce on that pair. Then it's a gap of three lengths for the back to Bank Street, and Golden Ticket now gets ahead in front. Millennium Wind is still there along the inside, and Point Given to the outside, right alongside. These three come from home to together in the grade one Hollywood futurity. Millennium wind is now just in front. Point given to the outside. And now golden ticket is slipped back third. Millennium wind and point given goes right up to him. These two a furlong to go. Point given gets a neck in front. Millennium wind trying to fight him off, but it's point given. Now a half a length. Millennium wind settles for second. And it's point given. The trailhead of the Kentucky Derby is here. And point given is at the head of the trail. And point given. Scores out and backs his breeders at one to five. The Bob Baffert trainee 
Gary Stevens, who rode this horse for the first time in the Breeders' Cup, admittedly thought he made his own mistake by having point given too far out of it. This wasn't the case on Saturday, as Gary Stevens just kept point given slightly off the pace set by Millennium Wind, who was making his second career start. And when the running got serious from the 516th pole home, Point Given displayed his outstanding form, hadn't won a race since a couple of races previously down at Turfway Park, then ran a bang up second to AP Valentine in the Champagne, and perhaps a winning effort if he wasn't as far back early to Macho Uno. So Bob Baffert may be heard from in the spring in the classics with this winner of the Hollywood Futurity, Point Given. Running second, Millennium Wind, and third, golden ticket. Now Millennium Win, who went off at 3-1, to one, was making only his second career start. This is a million dollar purchase by Crypto Clearance. Millennium Win had won a very impressive 7 furlong start, so this is possibly a horse we should keep our eye on in the future. He was up against it, giving away much experience in this field, but obviously has a world of talent. Chris McCarron tried to reserve some of his early speed for the late going, but just got run over by point given. And golden ticket finished a nice third. And then on Sunday at Hollywood Park, we had the female equivalent of the Futurity, the 20th running of the Hollywood Starlet. The mile and the 16th race for two-year-old fillies going two turns. So let's return to Hollywood Park. All in line in the grade one, Hollywood Starlet. And yeah, there they go. From between horses, I Believe in You, Cindy's Hero away with the front runners today, and Jet and Excess is down along the inside, Avalon Bay to the outside in fourth. They're followed by Haitian Vacation in fifth, and whoop de doo drops back six and last, trailing by five as they go through the turn. And it's Jet and Excess who gains the lead. She leads by almost a clear length. I Believe in You in second. Avalon Bay is third, while along the inside, Haitian Vacation has worked her way up into fourth. Cindy's Hero is now settling back into fifth position. She's just four from the front, then it's two back to whoop de doo that's the field as they turn onto the back stretch and Jet in excess where she likes to be. She's up on the front end and she leads it by a half a length. I believe in you is right there in second. Avalon Bay is still third. Haitian vacation. She's been at the rail throughout and she's in fourth. She's just three from the front. Cindy's hero is just a half a length off of her and whoop de doo still trails and she trails by six. They reach the half mile pole and Jet in excess gets there first. I believe in you. Vacation, a closer fourth. Cindy's hero, she's in fifth. She's just three and a half from the front. Then it's two back to whoop de doo Three for longs to run. Jet Nick says she hasn't been asked to give her all just yet. I believe in you running a big race to the outside. These two are just head for head as they come to the top of the stretch. Then it's a gap of two back to Cindy's hero. She comes through to take over third. whoop de doo is going to follow her. They come to the top of the stretch. Jet Nick says, I believe in you. Cindy's hero to the outside. Third needs to make up four. And it's Jet Nick says coming to the furlong pole. I believe in you just never went away, and now I Believe in You gets a nose in front. Jet in excess, Victor Esposa all out over her, but to the outside, it's I Believe in You. I Believe in You is believable. Jet in excess coming back on, but I Believe in You, a monstrous race for her. She beats out Jet in excess. whoop de doo got up to finish third. And I Believe in You, 5-1 to one by Pleasant Tap out of the Copeland Mare. I'll be there, ridden very successfully by Alex Stolis as he stalked the early leader, Jet in excess, who was made 9-5 to five on the board, undefeated, didn't get in to the Breeders' Cup. Juvenile Philly race comes out of a moccasin victory at Hollywood Park. whoop de doo finished third at 5-1. to one. I Believe in You is a maiden winner from Churchill Downs, trained by Paul McGee, who is having an outstanding year 2000 with two-year-olds doing very successfully on the Kentucky circuit. Ships in here, gets the job done, still eligible for non-winners of one other than reaches out and wins a grade one race. Jet in excess gets the first loss after four consecutive victory and whoop de doo a maiden winner who had stumbled at the start cindy's hero the short priced favorite finished fourth non-threatening exited what i thought was a poor performance in the breeders cup juvenile philly race no excuses there no excuses here the final running time for the 20th running of the hollywood starlet 143 and two now we'll come back east for Aqueduct's races on Saturday.
They had the 130th running of the Ladies Handicap. In all 129 previous editions, we'd only had one back-to-back -back winner that was way back in the mid-20s, but Strolling Bell, Victor last year in the Ladies Handicap, tried to make it two in a row in this mile and a quarter race at Aqueduct. So let's go down to Ozone Park and the Ladies Handicap. And they're off. Sazerac Jazz away first from her inside post with La Vie Rouge. And Strolling Bell up to join the first flight as they move by for the first time now. Past the stance the first time with Sazerac Jazz holding a lead. Strolling Bell well in hand and will sit back in second place. La Vie Rouge third. And then on the outside, Sarah Lake. Pentatonics in between horses. And the two trailers are Rain Amandine and Chris Pitt. The opening quarter in 25 and 2 fifth seconds. There's a mile left here. Sazerac Jazz is the leader. Strolling Bell sitting back second as the tempo begins to pick up just a bit here in the second quarter. La Vie Rouge races in third position. Pentatonic and Sarah Lake on the outside fifth. Then a break of seven. Back to Rain Amandine. The trailer is Chris Pitt. The half goes in 50 and 1 fifth seconds. Sazerac Jazz leads. And the favorite strolling bell sitting off her running second, three quarters of a length behind the lead. Two and a half lengths back to the trio of La Vie Rouge, Pentatonic, and Sarah Lake. The other two still well behind, Rain Amandine and Chris Pitt. With four furlongs to go, Sazerac Jazz holding a narrow advantage. Strolling bell right there alongside. Iberto Castillo Jr. still has strolling bell in hand. But on even terms now with Sazerac Jazz. And as they round the far turn, Strolling Bell has given her cue and she has taken command and takes command with authority. Sazerac Jazz, nothing left to respond. Pentatonic is coming with her run now and she's second on the outside. And La Vie Rouge splits horses and takes to the rail. They're at the top of the stretch. Strolling Bell confronted by Pentatonic. They're shoulder to shoulder with one furlong to go. Pentatonic has taken the lead. Strolling Bell fights right back. Strolling Bell and Pentatonic, their nip and tuck with the 16th to go. It is Pentatonic trying to lug in. The leader now. Pentatonic is the leader. Strolling Bell steadies. They near down the line. It is Pentatonic to win by two. Strolling Bell finishing second. Then it's Rain Amandine in a photo for show with La Vie Rouge. And there you have it, Pentatonic first under the wire under Robbie Davis, though, with the right-handed whip. Pentatonic drifted in to the left, basically checking Strolling Bell under Herberto Castillo. Stewart's looked at it for a couple moments, inverted the first and second place under the wire finish, thus making Strolling Bell the second consecutive winner of the 130 runnings of Ladies Handicap. Strolling Bell trained by John Kimmel. Very nice job. You don't see Philly and Mares running on the dirt at a mile and a quarter very often. Pentatonic disqualified, put second. Nothing to be ashamed of for this New York bred trained by Richie Shasberg. She has had an outstanding season competing against the absolute best in the older Philly and Mare handicap division. The likes of Beautiful Pleasure and Rebeletta. Finishing third was Rain Amadin. The final running time of this mile and a quarter race Two minutes and six with three-fifths of a second. Sunday's feature was a 20-second running of the Damon Runyon Stakes for two-year-old New York breads going a mile and a sixteenth. So let's return to Ozone Park and Sunday's Aqueduct feature. And they're off. It's Bluesbreaker who breaks on top. Bluesbreaker clears the field. And Aaron Grinder trying to take him in hand to throttle down that speed. Power choices there in between horses. And on the outside, Percival Pete just in behind the lead and down on the rail. It's Killer Angel running in fourth, followed by River Spirit who's saving ground in fifth. Backstreet Blues is sixth. Then Celtic Sky in the early trailer is Sweet Ricky. Blues Breaker takes the field into the back stretch with a two length lead. Power choice in pursuit along with Percival Pete on the outside. First quarter there in a solid 23 and 3 fifths seconds. Farther back in the field, Killer Angel is off the rail and raiding back in fourth position. River Spirit being asked to pick it up with five furlongs to go here. Then another break of two lengths back to Backstreet Blues. To his inside is Celtic Sky. And lagging well behind now is Sweet Ricky. As Blues Breaker continues to dictate his own pace here, the half went in 47 and 2 fifths seconds. Blues Breaker still in front. 
Still clear by length and a half. Percival Pete has now been put to the whip to try to get to Blues Breaker with less than three furlongs to go. A break of two and a half lengths. Killer Angel under the whip and full out driving third. And here comes Backstreet Blues rallying fourth on the outside. In between horses, Celtic Sky lingering at the back early and now moving into contention. Top of the stretch, Blues Breakers in a full out drive coming to mid stretch. Still leading by two. Percival Pete is running second. Backstreet Blues far outside third. One furlong to go. Blues Breakers still there. Two and a half lengths ahead of Percival Pete and Backstreet Blues. They're coming down to the finish. Blues Breaker trying to hang in there another 50 yards and holds on to win wire to wire. Blues Breaker the winner, three quarters of a length. Personable Pete was second. Backstreet Blues was third. And Blues Breaker gets the job done. Ridden by Aaron Grider, successfully trained by Alan Jerkins, by AP Jet, out of a relaunch mare, prematurely gray. Front end winner in here, defeating Personal Pete, the six to five choice having won two consecutive races in New York, trying to do what Estrapi did at the two-year-old Philly division last week, going three for three, but finishes a nice second place to Blues Breaker with Backstreet Blues finishing third at four to one. The final running time of the Damon Runyon, 144 and one. Well, that wraps up this past weekend stakes races from around the country. And as we head into the holiday season, the race stakes calendar gets extremely light. We have no racing in New York on Sunday, Christmas Day on Monday, only one racetrack as far as I know. Calder will be open, but Santa Anita opens up on Tuesday with the Grade 1 Malibu Stakes as they heat up. We'll have Gulfstream Park opening up in a couple of weeks. Orchards and Courses will be seen on Wednesday and Thursday next week as off-track betting will be closed for the Christmas Day holiday next Monday. So for everyone at OTV, my name is Anthony Mormino. We'll see you next week on HNC.